Good evening, freaks and friends, and welcome to Math Lessons. I'm your professor, uh, Math Machine Von Yapsalot, and today I'm going to be bringing a bit of a different show to you. Uh, I was asked by a few friends to talk about uh, something that uh, is more particular to the group that uh, I talk with a lot, and I didn't think that that would make for a good rant uh, segment because it would largely involve Disney Interactive and literally the entirety of that rant would just be me banging my head against the wall screaming why so I'm going to actually be showing off a new segment that I might do every now and again uh, called Math Lessons. This is going to be a bit of a, a history detail about a particular subject I have a bit of knowledge on and that I find interesting and some of my friends might find interesting. What I'm going to be talking about today is, as I said, Disney Interactive and also Play Dom. That will come into part near the end of this segment. Well, Disney, uh, I, I guess the best way to start is all the way back at the beginning of uh, gaming around the 80s. Well, that's not the beginning of gaming, but it's the beginning of Disney gaming. Back in the 80s, uh, mid, late 80s, during the uh, NES and especially the Super NES days, uh, what Disney did, they didn't make games themselves, they licensed out uh, games uh, to be made using their characters. Uh, Capcom, Sega, Nintendo, all the big companies, and a lot of small companies as well, have made Disney games, which were then sold th through Disney. Disney, in a sense, published their own stuff as well. Because Disney Interactive has actually been around for a very long time. It's been around since, I think it was... 88, but they didn't do anything with it other than uh, giving out rights and publishing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it wasn't until the mid to late 90s that they actually started doing their own thing with that. They started, uh, they, they had, uh, they bought a studio that they literally just used to say that they had a game studio and then they shut it down about a year later they reopened it and then shut it down again it wasn't until about 2003 when a game called uh, Toontown Online came about that they actually made their own uh, sort of game it was what that was, it was an MMO, but more of a child's MMO. And for what they were uh, attempting to do, and what they were going for, and the scope of what they were trying to do, it was a really good game. And it continued for 10 years, uh, which is actually a pretty decent length for an MMO. Uh, until it was just shut down uh, at the tail end of last year. Well, after that, had success, they started uh, thinking that they could get more into actual video games themselves. I say actual. Uh, especially because they had seen success with other big titles that they had licensed out, uh, such as uh, Kingdom Hearts. That was probably the biggest success that they had seen. And the, the origin of Kingdom Hearts, I'm just going to say that because I, I love this story. Basically, there were uh, two executives of some sort, one from uh, Disney, one from Square Enix. They were both in an elevator together. Uh, one guy said, I like your products. The other guy said, I like your products. They both were saying, oh, you know, it would be really cool if we could find a way to get our product into your product and vice versa. And then just a light bulb went off one of the biggest game series of the last 10 years came from two executives just shooting the breeze in an elevator. Anything can happen. It's a fun story. I like to tell it. But with the success of that and Toontown Online, they started actually getting into game development themselves. 
and they had a couple of studios of their own. By that I mean bought. And they were making some medium-sized, a little bit larger games. Uh, especially for the mobile, uh, not mobile, uh, the handheld market, uh, the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS. They were really good at that. They didn't feel too comfortable making full-fledged console games themselves uh, until uh, really late on. Uh, the biggest ones would be Epic Mickey. Uh, Epic Mickey 1 and 2 were fantastic games that they actually made in-house. And I'll detail a, bit, a little bit later on what happened with those. Well, uh, in 2010, when they really started ramping up, uh, their uh, buying power. They bought a company called Playdom, which Playdom was a social uh, game company uh, at that point. They did Facebook games, MySpace games. They didn't really do mobile games because the mobile market wasn't, it was kicking off at that point. They bought them because that was the market that was really picking up at that time. So they thought that they should get into that by having what was the second or third biggest company at that point. They bought them for $750 million, all things told. This w probably wouldn't have been as bad as it ultimately came to be, except that I think that it was in the contract that they signed uh, with the purchase agreement. The president of Playdom also became the co-president of Disney Interactive when that purchase happened. Again, this couldn't have, this might have not been as disastrous as it ultimately came to be, except that the other president of Disney Interactive is the stupidest man I've ever seen in my life. This is a guy who at one point was the, he got to be president of Disney Interactive and then co-president because he was the vice president of Yahoo in charge of their music and sports. Two things that have absolutely nothing to do with video games. So they hired him to run the entire Disney division of video games. So when those two people came to be co-presidents, that's particularly when things started to go downhill because they both had visions and those visions did not match with reality. They, uh, this was also at the time when, just shortly afterwards, Dis the main branch of Disney had acquired Marvel and all rights therein. So what they did was uh, they had played on their newest acquisition, make a uh, the I think it was the second official Disney game like that had Disney in the title. It, it was called Marvel Avengers Alliance, which was a tie-in to the Avengers movie. I, I say that a bit loosely because it it it. It has some of the main cast from it, but it's, it's also more along the lines of uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance back from the uh, Xbox and Xbox 360, PS2, PS3 days, uh, where basically you just had a gigantic group of Marvel characters all fighting together. Uh, that was a game made in March of 2012 and is still going on to this day. It, I think that it, in, it originally was intended that it would be uh, just just a tie-in with the Avengers movie to just build up hype for that, and then it actually became a really popular game in the, in its own right. So they continued it for the longest time, and again, I'll touch back on this in a moment. As th as the years progressed from 2010 on. Both of those presidents started making really, really bad decisions, particularly because w one guy, the, the former Yahoo guy, had absolutely no idea what he was doing. That's been pretty obvious. And the other guy was a social media uh, 
game guy, so he focused mostly on Facebook and mobile and those kind of things, and the other guy had no idea what he was doing, so he followed suit and focused on Facebook and mobile. So a lot of their bigger games, such as Epic Mickey and Epic Mickey 2, uh, received less attention because of that, and even though both of those games were met with huge success, both critically and, I believe, financially, they decided to shut down that that studio entirely because they had no idea what they were doing with it and they didn't know how to run it. After Epic Mickey 2 was launched, that was it. Studio gone. There was no rhyme or reason to it, but they just got rid of it. I believe that it was because they were focusing all the resources on uh, basically, if you've ever seen Spyro Skylanders or whatever it's called, where you have these little action figure things that you have uh, that you have a board that you just place them on, and then uh, an image of that character will pop up on the screen in the game, and you'll be able to control that character like that. They focused on their own version of that because that was something that they saw was becoming popular. So they decided to work with that because it would it wasn't a big expansive game. It was more not in the vein of social media or mobile games, but more something that they could handle that wasn't as huge budget that had a lot of little bits and pieces that they could piecemeal out. So they focused all their resources on that and then uh, they kept focusing heavily on social media games, which kind of kicked them in the butt because that market from about 2013 on has steadily declined. Mobile market has risen, but not to the point where it was enough to sustain them. Now a company, now let's fast forward to today, uh, a company that was making hundreds of millions of dollars previously is now losing something in the ballpark of $300 million a year as of last year. And the former head of Fidom, who was the co-president of Disney Interactive, stepped down at the end of 2013, leaving only that <laughs> guy in charge of everything. And... Since that point, things have just exploded really quickly. He's literally taken everything away from bigger studios. He's focused solely on this particular branch. He's done away with a lot of their social media stuff as well because Playdom had a gigantic... They, they recently had a downsizing of 700 employees in Disney Interactive in its whole, but also they had the largest portion of that come from Playdom Studio, so that now the only game that... Well, there's two, really, games that are left, and both of them are Marvel because those were the only ones that were profitable because they had the Marvel name, which, as the years go by... Well, months, actually, because this is only a two-year-old game and a game that literally recently came out. As the months go by, the coding in these seems to deteriorate because Playdom does not seem to be a company that knows how to work with this or this was something that they made intending for it to be a short-term thing that Disney Interactive wanted to continue because it became so popular. And now we find ourselves at where we are. Uh, Disney doesn't make their own games anymore. They have completely stopped that. They source out everything except for that, I think it's called Disney Interactive, which is the Skylanders thing. They still make that themselves, I believe, but everything else is sourced out, uh, sold off. Uh, they acquired Lucas uh, and they sold off the rights to all Lucas games to EA because they didn't even want to try with that. It has just continued like that, and I feel that it will continue to devolve at that rate 
until either Disney no longer makes anything themselves, which we're almost there, or they just stop trying with games in general, because unless they get rid of the current president they have, they will fail, and we will see a studio that once was very successful just completely flounder to a state where it is just existent in name alone. So whatever the future holds, I can't be certain, but I do know that as long as the current head is there, it's not looking too bright. This has been Math Machine detailing the, the doom of Disney Interactive, and as always, peace out.